I am Jenna Wasonko and this is QTV News coming to you live from our studios along Kaiba Avenue. Thanks for joining us now here are the main local and sports news headlines. After a short recess, the National Assembly resumed sittings today and there's good news as the speaker confirms that some bills have received presidential assent. The Ministry of Agriculture and International Partners have held discussions based around consultations about strengthening the country's food systems. The Gambia Clubfoot Foundation and its partners over the weekend commemorated World Clubfoot Day in a ceremony to raise awareness of and address stigma attached to the condition. And a 21-year-old man is in police custody after alleging starting a fire which consumed three apartments. Those were the main headlines and now the news in detail. Do stay with us. Thank you for joining us. Following a recess, uh, the National Assembly of the Gambia resumed sittings on Monday for the second ordinary session in the 2021 legislative year. Ali Sise has the rest of that. Members are back to the Parliament's chamber to carry out their parliamentary functions as lawmakers. At the start of the session, which is scheduled to last from 14 June to 6 July 2021, Mariam Jack Denton, Speaker of the Parliament, applauded the deputies the clerk and National Assembly staff for their commitment to national duty. She preaches togetherness for the good of the people they represent and reveals the President has assented to some of the bills passed. I wish to report that the following bills having been passed by the National Assembly during the first ordinary session in the 2021 legislative year have been assented to by His Excellency the President of the Republic on the 23rd of April, 2021, as follows. One, the Women's Amendment Bill, 2021, the Civil Marriages Amendment Bill, 2021, the Christian Marriages Amendment Bill, 2021, and the Married Women's Property Amendment Bill, 2021, together with the Matrimonial Causes Amendment Bill, 2021. 21. The speaker's remark and a review of the records of the last sitting of the first ordinary session were followed by the laying of the report of the Standing Committee of Human Rights and Constitutional Matters on the Passing with Disabilities Bill 2020, which is before lawmakers for enactment. The bill was tabled in June last year. Having gone through the first and second readings, the bill was referred to the Standing Committee on Human Rights and Constitutional Matters, chaired by Speaker Mariam Jack Denton, for comprehensive scrutiny involving stakeholders' engagement and report back to the plenary. If enacted and implemented, the bill makes provision for the health care, social support, accessibility, rehabilitation, education, and vocational training, communication, employment, and work protection, and promotion of basic rights for persons with disabilities and for connected matters. Suai Buture, the vice chairman of the standing committee, shared with colleagues the committee's findings, observations, and proposals. It, uh, it was observed further observe that there are many sections in the bill which made reference to schedules. However, those schedules are not attached to the bill, or were not attached to the bill. It is therefore recommended that the aforementioned schedule or schedules be attached. Members including Sekuba Jaji of Busumbala, Bile Tunkara of Kantora, Fode Drame of Tumana, Seni Ture of Jara East, nominated member Dei Yasin Seka and Halifa Sala of Serekunda, took turns to express delight that progress is being made to enact the bill. Notwithstanding, the message sons to add value. Uh, I want to plead to my colleagues that we, we adopt this report with amendments and then see how best we can go about it. Because this disability bill has been a long, long overdue. Yes, the, the bill is long overdue. We need the bill. You know, for this vulnerable section of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the society, but also we want the due process to be done, not in rush. Uh, one issue that I would want the committee ultimately to look again, uh, but maybe uh, I would make observation at the consideration stage, is the issue of affirmative action. 
The committee's report was subsequently adopted and the bill is now set for the consideration stage at a later date. During this second ordinary session, the parliament is expected to consider for enactment and adoption of other important bills and reports. Ministers will also be summoned to appear to respond to questions on matters relating to their ministries. Sitting continues on Tuesday. Reporting for QTV News, I am Alou Sisse. In response to the UN Secretary General's call for member states to carry out Food Systems Summit dialogue, the Ministry of Agriculture, in partnership with FAO and the EU, on Monday held a day-long consultation with various stakeholders within the Carnifing municipality. And Sumana Esonyasi was there and he fastened the support. The aim of these regional stakeholder consultations is to generate new ideas and solutions as well as foster partnerships to better address loopholes within the national food systems with a view to identifying priorities for action, especially within the context of current national realities, including the COVID-19 situation. Among those in attendance are farmers and stakeholders, including those from food processing establishments. Musa M. Huma is the Deputy Permanent Secretary at the Ministry of Agriculture, and he explains the importance of these regional stakeholder dialogue summits. The take-home message would be um, the food system is very large and it's, it almost involves everybody. Like if you see in the people that are invited, we invited producers, uh, processors, transporters, um, those providing energy, and the youth, the women, and everybody across because food is everybody's business. Um, what I would uh, encourage everybody to come with, all, with every opinion they have that would uh, better our food system. Falai Balde. One of two consultants guiding these consultations says such summits are important as they provide local farmers an opportunity to make commitments on how to contribute to the sustainability of Gambian food systems, adding that their findings have so far revealed that a lot more work needs to be done to install secured food systems. At the regional level, we've looked at the four dimensions, but the key issue that's coming out glaringly is the, the climate change as a key driver you know, to, 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 to be impacting on the food systems and some of the food systems activities impacting on the environment and as well as uh, the socio-economics, the, uh, the, the territorial balance and so forth. Mama Sise, also a consultant, explains some of the constraints already identified by stakeholders. The food system has a number of uh, dimensions. There are four dimensions of the food systems assessment. And these are the food and nutrition security dimension. Um, you have the socio-economy. You also have um, the territorial and equity, which is looking at uh, the gender equity parts and also the, the regional uh, disparities. You also have the environment, which is a very important uh, part of the process. This food system summit offers an unprecedented opportunity for the sector to define the future of our food systems with action tracks aimed at ensuring access to safe and nutritious food for all, boost nature positive production, build resilience to vulnerabilities, shocks and stress, and inclusive private sector participation in food systems. Having held similar consultations in all regions, FAO, CIRAD and the Ministry of Agriculture will wrap up these summits with a similar meeting in Banjul in the coming days. And they hope that recommendations gathered from these dialogues will help government as they draw up a report on our national food security systems which will be presented to the UN General Assembly by the President during the next UN General Assembly. Answane Sonyasi for QTV News. The Gambia Clubfoot Foundation and its partners over the weekend commemorated World Clubfoot Day in a ceremony held at the Governor's Office in Brikama. The annual event is organized by healthcare organizations across the world every 3rd of June to raise awareness and increases access to proper treatment for children born with clubfoot in developing countries. Babu Kersi has the rest of that story. World Club Food Day is commemorated to raise awareness about club food disability and its prevention using non-surgical treatment that includes gentle manipulation of the feet followed by the application of plaster cast and temporary club food brazing. Organized by the Gambia Club Food Foundation and its partners, the day brought together disabled children and women struggling with the disability. In welcoming the gathering, the Deputy Governor of West Coast Region, Musa Suso, said they are happy to be associated with the day. Every year, about 200,000 babies are born globally with club food, and 80% of this health from developing countries like the Gambia. Needless to say, Mr. Chairman, this undesirable health condition, if not treated on time, may consequently 
make access to education difficult for the victims. The Club Food Country Coordinator, Dr. Ibu Kamara, said without the help of his team of doctors, many young children would have been disabled. If without this dedicated team from Carnival General Hospital, Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital, and the support of the administration of these two hospitals, these children would have been disabled for life. The laws of this country, club food is not being budgeted as part of public health problem. We realize that it's not being budgeted. It is recognized at the ministry level. It is a disability. Now that we have a treatment for it, we want the National Assembly to help us change the laws, include it as part of public health problem, budget from the national budget, include it in the budget, and we work with the Minister of Health to be able to promote and train our own people, use the resources, national resources, and able to get the equipment that we need to do the treatment in our own country. Dr. Keba Marena of the Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital, a lead doctor in the treatment of club food, gave statistics of club food in the country and the stigma attached to those suffering from it. Almost one in 800 children is estimated are born with this disability. If you look at the birth rate in Gambia currently, that is equivalent to almost 100 children per year, likely, um, who are born with blood food. That is a lot of children who can be helped with what is a very simple procedure. As I mentioned, it's one of the leading causes of disability worldwide, but especially in low to middle income countries like ours. There's a lot of social stigma that is attached to it. Uh, a lot of talk about whether it's witchcraft or other um, social stigma that comes with it. Often a child will be born and maybe somebody will they'll even try to hide the child uh, rather than face up to the fact that they can bring this child for a facility and the child can get proper treatment. Dr. Marina added that the treatment of club food is expensive but worth it as treating the children suffering from it at an early age is better than leaving them disabled for the rest of their lives. It's not a free treatment. We go through several casting procedures, braces, the resources from the uh, staff involved, the support staff, all that factored in. One of our partners, Miracle Feet, estimates that for each child that we treat, about the equivalent of about $24,000 per child. The foundation has also announced the treatment of club food patients at the Brickama Health Center and are working with the Ministry of Health and other stakeholders to include club food treatment as part of the courses at the School of Nursing. Babu Karsi, QTV News. Thumbs up to the Club Food Foundation. We will now take a short commercial break. Still to come, we have more local news and sports news as well. Do stay tuned. Your favorite mobile service has done it again. Now you can buy cash power with your Q Money account free of charge. Yes, you heard me right. For free. Nothing is cheaper than free. So start buying your cash power from the comfort of your homes with unbeatable services Q Money has to offer. With Q Money, life is easy. Visit your nearest Q Money agent to cash in or call customer care on 133 for more information. Don't forget to wash your hands with soap after handling cash. Stay home, stay clean, stay safe. Q Money, Sunyu Kalpe. We innovate, others follow. Welcome back from that short commercial break. If you're just tuning in, this is QTV News and I am Jenna Prasonko. Now, Mansakoli Opa Basic School came on top in the Maiden Take M Dream Game of Spelling Competition. The school secured top three awards after 10 rounds. Our reporter, Momodu Gajaga, the game timing director at this event, has more. Not everyone is good at spelling even the most common words used in both written and spoken English. These three students from the same school, Mansakoli Opo Basic School in Brikama, were not only able to spell words, but use them accurately in a sentence. Ibrahim Asedi is the most outstanding student in this competition, and he scooped the $25,000 winner's award. At one point, it appeared to be neck and neck between the eventual second place contestant, Linda Ken Juve and the winner, Ibrahim Asedi. However, Linda failed to use a word correctly in a sentence. 
As first runner-up, she has won the $15,000 his prize money. While Yamunda Usamba came third, receiving $10,000. Bakari Tambedu, education officer in Region 2, spoke about the need for students to take spelling and word usage seriously. I urge all of you, the students, to take this competition very seriously because it will help you in your academic struggle. If you are good at this competition here, what it goes to show is your skills in spelling is improved, your skills in forming words is improved, your skills in logic. Tunde Muyu Ogundimu, founder of the Tekem Transformational Organization, says their desire is to create a new operating system to master spelling skills, instill value of discipline, responsibility, empathy, and merit in students. At Tekem, we are doing all things that is possible to have a nice future for this young student. And this new program is div entirely different from Spelling Bay, which today you are, are going to see and give us a kudo. The event was also attended by teachers and parents. Billy Jallo is a parent whose child was among the winners in the previous Spelling Bee competitions. She urged parents to encourage their children to study hard as education is an important undertaking. Spelling words rightly, using them correctly in a sentence, can help improve one's grammar, vocabulary, and mastery of the English language. Mumudu Gajaga, QTV News. Congratulations to the little ones. Now, as the preparations for the 2021 presidential elections continue, QTV's reporter in CRR, Alassan Ba, visited the IEC Voter Registration Center in Soma to observe the process. Here is his report. The voter registration process starts at 8 in the morning and closes at 5 in the evening, every day. A police officer is stationed at the center to check people's temperature before sanitizing their hands. Elizabeth Jaju, an IEC official, said, the registration process is going smoothly and people, including the young, are responding. See further outlines the document one requires to get a voter's card. People are coming out. We have the Alcalo and the elders of the village. The youths especially, they're all coming out and it is going well. We're still encouraging people to still come out and get their cards. Um, the requirement for a person to have a voter's card is... Um, you, the person can have it by producing, giving us an ID card, a passport, a valid one, and then a, or a birth certificate. But in the event that um, an individual is not having three of them, neither the birth certificate or the voter's card or the ID card, he or she can get um, an attestation from the Alcalo, being signed and endorsed by the Alcalo that the person is a native of Soma. Dembadabo, the Alcalo of Jara Soma, explains who is entitled to an Alcalo attestation document. Bakoto Manka, a resident of Jomari village in Kiang East, walked six kilometers to Jasobo to register and explains the significance of getting a voter's card. So I was able to get an ID card to get a voter's card. I was able to get an ID card to get a voter's card. The voter registration commences on 29th April 2021 and ends on 11 July 2021. The presidential election is scheduled for 4th December 2021. Reporting for QTV News, I am Al Hassanba. Action Aid International de Gambe, in collaboration with United Popos and CRS, are embarking on an advocacy caravan on climate change in all the five regions of the country. The aim is to empower civil society organizations by engaging citizens in the green economy. Alaji A.F. Jalo reports. 
Action Aid International the Gambia and Partners caravan on Saturday arrived in Kundam village in Tumana district in the URR. During the engagement, the project coordinator for Action Aid International the Gambia, Sajo Kamara, said the objective of the activity is to empower civil society organizations to go back to their communities and mobilize citizens' actions and collect demands to share with relevant stakeholders. So far so good. It has been a successful caravan because we were able to uh, um, go to um, our target communities and we were able to have people to listen to us, especially when it comes to the contributions from the governors. I think it's really, really um, a great uh, uh, parade. The whole idea is to empower civil society organizations uh, to go back to the communities and then collect demands, collect demands that will be shared in the future during our advocacy meetings with parliamentarians, okay, with po other policy makers and also uh, other line ministries. Uh, and, I, and I'm hopeful that something will come out of it. Amadou Jalo, communication assistant for activists, said public reaction to and turn out for their caravan is overwhelming. Caravan, uh, to me, it's, it's very important. It could not have come earlier than this. And uh, the reaction of the people towards the caravan is very welcoming because what we're trying to do, we're trying to get uh, do the uh, bottom-top approach to get the recommendation from the, from, from the people, from the community members, because we believe they are the, they are the affected people. So if we have the recommendations from them, then we can, we, we can move it to the, to the, to the safe house, that the district, then from there we can go to the governors and hear from them too. Then from there we can talk to the parliamentarians and see how best we can formulate the laws, the policies that are there, how best can we make so these policies are not just there for the sake of being there, but they are implemented too. Kumbasanyang from Rural Women's Assembly said, collaborative efforts are essential in advocacy activities like this. Rural Women's Assembly, Atibista, and Rural Forestry, we are going to go to this is a collaborative effort between activists, all Gambia Forestry Platform and Rural Women Assembly on behalf of Action 8. We have embarked on this caravan to create awareness to communities. We inform them of what is happening in our country and the present generation about the climate. It is necessary to engage and discuss with citizens the devastating effect of climate change so they can make informed decisions. Climate change affects us all and efforts need to be done to combat it. Citizens, the government, the public and private sector have to work together to save our world. Reporting for QTV News, I am Alaji A.F. Jalo. A 21-year-old man is in police custody after allegedly setting fire to his father's compound in London Corner on Sunday, destroying three apartments. Lola and Kamara visited the family and he, she files in the report. According to the victims, the fire was allegedly deliberately started by a 21-year-old, said to be the landlord's younger brother's son, who they allege was on drugs and mentally imbalanced. We have not been able to verify these allegations. On that Sunday morning, most of the occupants were out. Sarah Tasaho, the landlord's wife, explains what happened. I was in my room shortly after breakfast. I heard someone sound. It was my brother's wife calling for help, saying he had started a fire in his room. And at the time, her baby was sleeping inside. She then rushed and took the baby out. As you can see, nothing was removed from these houses. All got born thanks to Sambuja. Since last year, he has been suffering from mental health problems, causing a lot of troubles. He also smokes cannabis, steals from us, and even tried multiple times to rape our children. S.I. Jeng is a tenant and a victim. He said it was an unfortunate situation, but thank God that no life was lost. Everything inside the house, including money, got burnt. I can't even tell you exactly the things I lost. But I thank God for our lives because if it had happened at night, that would have been the worst. 
Mariama Salah and Nebo also echoed the allegations that the young man has been causing problems. His attempts were serious ones because he would always be naked trying to abuse people. He even tried to abuse me, but I was furious and showed him that I'm not the type he could mess with. I even threatened to kill him if he does not put a stop to it. In appearing to confirm the allegations, Alaji Keba Jaita, the landlord, has this to say. This young man has really disturbed me in this house, but he is still my son and I can't just abandon him. To be honest, from this moment, if he finally leaves this compound for good, I will be the happiest man on earth. Look at the damage he has caused me and the people residing here. During my conversation with some of the family members, they revealed that the alleged suspect is a grade 12 student. They said that he has been taken to Tanka Tanka twice but escaped admission. Now he is in police custody. At this time of this broadcast, we were unable to independently verify allegations against the 21-year-old. Known were we able to ascertain what formal charges, if any, had been laid against him. Once we have verified these further details, we will update our viewers. For QTV News, Lolly M. Kamara. Well, that is all we have for you in this edition of QTV News. Do join us tomorrow, same time for mornings. Thanks for watching and have a good week ahead.